Hi people, so I just made like a 10 minute video which I ended up cancelling because it was 10 minutes and it was talking about way too many things within one video, so I was like, yeah, no good. So, and because I am too lazy on this channel to actually film and record and edit and shit, which is something I save for my other channels, which you'll notice has a lot fewer uploads, I'm just gonna start over. So I was originally talking about cravings, and then this thing got me thinking about deficiencies, which got me thinking about my iron deficiency, which got me like talking about how I have ADHD and, and all these mental illness things. On, and then it reminded me of how I saw this post on Facebook about it was like, what if physical illnesses were treated like, uh, if people treated people with physical illnesses the way they treat people with mental illnesses, and it was like really funny because it's like, yeah, seriously. Um, so. And then, I, and then I'm like, you know what, I should make a video about that, because, again, I have AD attention deficit problems, so I can go from one topic to another in, like, ten minutes, and I'm, ten, not ten, like, a minute, I'll have, like, ten different topics I'm already jumped to, so, um, I'm the queen of random because of that, like, someone's talking about something, and I'll be like, talk about this, because it's like, my brain was like, pff, pff. anyway, so, um, also, my meds last 12 hours, and it's been almost 12 hours, so they're kind of wearing off now, which is why I'm so, like, you can tell I have ADHD right now, and stuff. <laughs> so, um, uh, one of the things was, I was talking about with the, the cravings and stuff, is I have an iron deficiency, but I have a really rare kind, which meant it went untreated for a really long time, because a lot of doctors are like, you don't have any iron problems, and I'm like, I do, I have all the symptoms, and they're like, no, it's just because you're depressed, and have anxiety problems. So eventually they sent me to a psychiatrist who looked at my blood test results and were like, uh, you totally have an iron deficiency, but it's like this really rare one that affects the brain or something. It's like an iron deficiency, it's like the brain, because apparently there's like blood slash body iron, and then there's like iron for the brain and muscles a little bit. I'm not 100% sure how it all works, because she didn't really explain it that well because she was a child psychiatrist because I was 17 at the time, which was really annoying. She treated me like I was a little kid, even though I was almost an adult. I didn't see her for very long because she was just a shitty psychiatrist to begin with, anyways. Um, and she put me on clonidine for a short while, which is, if a if a doctor recommends putting you on clonidine, do not go on that fucking drug. I was only on a week when I, before I ended up in the hospital. Holy crap, that shit made me nuts. Like I mean, literally, like I was fucking hallucinating the first day after I took it. Like for fuck's sake, like I I, I woke up, couldn't move, and I was like like, I was looking at this laundry basket, and there was, like, this sock talking to me, I said, like, I couldn't hear, it was just, like, really freaky looking, and god damn it, um, and it was, like, causing insomnia problems, and it was, uh, a whole mess of shit, anyways, don't go on client and then I heard, I found out later that, like, it causes, like, if you're on it for a long period of time, it can cause a lot of problems with your physical system, and I'm like, why isn't this drug illegal? Anyways, so talking about stigma about mental illnesses, I've already gotten three minutes in. Wow. Anyways, uh, so talking about ADHD is what got me to the whole, like, stigma thingy, because what mental illness has the most stigma in that it's not real? Okay, that is debatable, because almost all of them have that kind of stigma attached to it, but a lot of people campaign against the diagnosis and treatment of ADHD or ADD or whatever. I'm just going to say ADHD, because it just comes out the tongue better for some reason. Um... So, it, I'm talking about the same sort of thing. I know there's a slight difference, but it's, it's slight. So, the, a lot of people have uh, traced it back to being low dopamine levels into the in the brain, which is um, brain hormone, brain chemical. I would totally explain it if I was trying not to make a long video, because I can easily do that. Um, run me. Uh, so, uh, you know, which is why they tr uh, effective treatment for it are with stimulants rather de than depressants. And before everyone's like, wait, what? Depressant stimulants? Okay. Stimulants are drugs that stimulate, give you energy kind of thing. And depressants are not drugs that make you depressed. They're relaxing, kind of, or they're calming or something. Um, actually, funny thing. Most people think if you take an ADHD person's medication um, and you don't have it, you'll just get, like, super calm and mellow and just be like, whatever, man. But, um, and if you take a depressed person's antidepressants, that you'll get all like, I'm happy! <laughs> like, ridiculousness. When actually it'll be closer to the opposite happening, because antidepressants more cause you, if you don't have depression and you take an antidepressant, it'll actually cause you just to be calmer. And both of them help you to think clearer, because 
they are two mental illnesses. Mo almost all mental illnesses fuck with how you can think, make it so you can't think properly. So uh, it basically will just calm you down more than anything. They're making you like super happy. And if you take a into or an ADHD medication, it will actually make you like okay, energy. Let's do things. Except not like crazy energy like you get from like caffeine or something, but like just you know energy where you can actually do things with it. And you're like okay, let's do all the things. The meme, do all the things. Um, because that's what an ADHD person needs is that they need something to stimulate their brain towards something, because the, the normal drive or energy that people have to complete everyday tasks is disorganized and kind of all over the place. Now, you can correct me if my information is wrong, I will explain why my information is wrong due to lack of access to information. After I finish this one quick explanation, anyway, so it's just kind of sporadic and all over the place because of the lack of dopamine levels, and so they lack the energy to have focus or something, so then you take the stimulant and it actually gets you to focus, but it's specific controlled stimulants, so don't think that if you have ADHD that drinking a bunch of caffeine will help, because trust me, it does not. <laughs> so, um, and as for the lack of information thing I mentioned earlier, the most annoying thing about trying to find out information about ADHD is that you find more information about how it's an imaginary illness and it's a conspiracy by pharmaceutical companies and so whatever, blah, 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 about, and I get 10 million things, and oh, like, soon after getting the diagnosis, I was doing some research on it, and then Google's like, oh, you're looking into ADHD, let's change all your YouTube ads to shit about how mental illnesses are fake. And all these fucking corporations, like, oh, putting all these labels on our kids, giving all these medication to our kids or whatever, and, um, or even just to, not to kids, to adults, too, like, uh, saying, you know, um, this person is, you know, it's, like, there's this one with, like, putting a stamp, like, bipolar and ADHD and anxiety and depression, all this, on the kids' heads, and, or, like, with these t wearing these t-shirts and the miserable will take them off, and it was, like, free-spirited leader, natural leader, blah, 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 and I was like, okay, I have three different mental illnesses. I have ADHD, as I mentioned, I have social anxiety disorder, and I have bipolar disorder. They're being treated, so you can... I'm normal-ish. But, uh, not normal. But, I, like, I'm taking medication for them, and I am seeking therapy for them. So I'm actually doing something about it, which is contrary to what they would believe. Medications are not the solve all, as I have mentioned in my previous video, um, why you should take your medic medications. They're not, you know, they're not going to solve your mental illness problems because you have the mental illness problems because of psychological factors. More often than not, there are ones that are based solely on chemical, which is the ADHD. It's pretty much a chemical one. Like, honestly, I cannot think of any sort of traumatic past that could have caused me to have trouble focusing because my other mental illness problems? Yes, a little bit more so. But even ones, like, even almost all uh, mental illnesses are in part because of um, chemical reactions in the brain and in part because of past traumas or experiences or um, just basically, you know, external, sorry, external factors. That is the best term to, to describe it. So medication can help, will help solve the chemical side of it as well as just in general turn down the volume on your mental illness. Now, people, when people who don't have a mental illness hear that, they're like, what? And people who do have mental illness are like, that's exactly it. Because when you have a mental illness, so let's say you have anxiety in your head, it's constantly like, um, oh fuck, don't do that. Oh fuck, what the hell did you do? Fuck, like, okay, I swear a lot. My, as my stepfather says, I have a very, uh, very f vocabulary, so, um, it's kind of like, oh, you messed up here, oh, look, they're looking at you funny because you embarrassed yourself, oh, you look stupid in that, why did you wear that today? Like, constant, like, all these doubts and uh, derogatory things going on in your head, like crazy, um, or you have ADHD, it's like, oh, look at that, oh, oh did you know this, 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 blah, 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 and, like, a million different things going on in your brain, uh, depression, you know, a lot of, like, you know, it's like, oh, you're ugly, you're fat, you're worthless, there's no point in doing anything, and just kind of, I'm, I'm really oversimplifying things, but just bear with me. But basically, like, there's just, there's just the noise in your brain, or there's, like, it's just making your brain not work right, and I'll put a link in the description, which is, like, the thing that describes it very well, um, but just, like, things that just don't, it, it fucks with your brain, so you can't think, so you can't get therapy if your brain is all clogged up and you can't think right. So, medication turns down the volume, so then you go to your counselor and you can be like, 
you can think more objectively about your problems and your experiences and your mental illness to then have tools to deal with it, uh, deal with the problems long term that the medication does not provide. My, but people will still take medication long term because it does, again, help to turn it down to be a manageable level where you can use the tools you'll learn in therapy to, take, to manage them so you can live a productive life. So it's any both. And in the analogy, is the other videos like uh, the Band-Aid and whatever else, like mental illness is not fictional. It is overdiagnosed, but it is not fictional. And you claiming, putting a broad statement out there that it is fictional and that it's a uh, conspiracy and the pharmaceutical companies are greedy, which first of all, they, I've read places, it's like, they're not. So, um, you know, it's like this big conspiracy and blah, blah, blah. And yes, People look for a quick, easy cure, so take this pill, feel better. So people seek that out, so pressured by customers, not executives, they're like, oh shit, we gotta fix these problems with a pill. So yeah, fine, they'll be throwing out pills at left, right, and center because nobody wants to go through the therapy and deal with the reasons why they feel the way they do. I'm going through that now. It feels like shit to realize how much shit you've gone through and to re like it's just, it is, it's not a nice experience while you're doing it, but you become better for it later. Um, so people don't want to go through the, you know, the, the heavy stuff emotionally and all that other stuff. So they want a quick, easy fix. There isn't a quick, easy fix to the mental illness. And you can't, so yes, Medication ends up being that because it's catering to what people want. Um, and it's so much, there's so many more uh, psychiatrists than there are psychologists. You see a psychiatrist primarily for medication. You see a psychologist for, you know, therapy and uh, stuff like that. But if you don't, have, and, um, say in Canada with universal health care, psychiatrists are covered by OHIP. Sorry, I live in Ontario, so, uh, are covered by the universal health care, whereas psychologists are not interesting so yeah they're throwing medications at you because that's all they're trained really to do because i know for a fact my fucking psychiatrist is like well i'm like i have the hardest time focusing and like keeping myself on track for school and doing my homework on time what does she say you should uh develop better self-discipline I know that. <laughs> I don't need some fucking uh, psychiatrist to tell me that. I know I need to develop better self-discipline. -dis tell me how! <laughs> so, um, but then, luckily, I have a counselor at work, I, er, at work, at school, I see. So, the counselor is actually doing a fantastic job, I have to say, for dealing with problems and shit. Ugh, I have problems. Holy crap, this video's 13 minutes already? Ah! I'll continue videoing, whatever. Uh, so, like, so yeah, like, you don't have to see a psychologist to solve your problems. Sometimes you can even just see a counselor, and you'd be surprised what services are available, especially if you're youth, because they have a lot more services for youth, I find, for mental illness than uh, for adults. For example, in I live in Ottawa. Uh, YSB has um, walk-in clinics to see counselors to talk about your problems, and I used to do all the time. But they're like, oh, it's for 19 and under. I am turning 21 in a week and a half. So, obviously, I've been unable to access those resources for, like, two years almost. So, there's a lot more, I find, for the younger people, because the younger people also have the added disadvantage of having hormones going, like, crazy, and you're like, let's make every single emotion ten times stronger than it needs to be. Uh, so, you know, they tend to do more rash things, like self-harm and suicide, so they're trying to prevent that, obviously, because they don't want you killing yourself over something small, they don't want you killing yourself, obviously, but they're more prone to do so because they can't think things through as well, because they can't see into the future as well, because they don't have the past experience that they need to, and also, again, hormones turning up the volume on every emotion. So, yeah, yes, they're trying to get mental illness problems taken care of in children, because they don't have the, the kind of, like, look, this is what my, lo the like, looking into the future abilities as much as um, adults do. Now, the one thing that drove me nuts was people saying that their teenage daughter or whatever, um, son or 
whoever was diagnosed with depression and given antidepressants and then committed suicide after getting put on the antidepressants. Um, it's not the antidepressants' fault. Your child, it's not like she had never been on those antidepressants, she'd be still alive today. You don't know that because she had depression, obviously. But then, sorry, it was a, a lot of those stories was like talking about their daughters, so that's why I'm saying she. Um, it was like, they obviously had anti, uh, they had depression problems to begin with. So, yeah, they were going to commit, they, they had a higher chance of committing suicide. And the first two weeks, you have to, of being on an antidepressant, you do not leave that person alone. My mom knew that because she has a uh, history of mental illness. So when I was first put on antidepressants, she was like watching me like a hawk. And I remember, um, cause I, cause the reason why the first two weeks is because you're so depressed sometimes you can't even think, and then it kind of the right antidepressants wake you up. You haven't got quite gotten to the point where they wake, where they make you feel like things are gonna be okay, but they kind of you know wake you up enough to uh, be like, shit, my life sucks actually and like for example me um when i got put on the antidepressants it was after because at the time i just thought i had regular depression it turns out bipolar disorder my first real depressive episode it lasted five months i gained 50 pounds in five months because emotion eating is how i dealt with problems and when um like i kind of woke up with the antidepressants i was like I gained all this weight. I have all these, all this loose skin now. Even if I were to lose it, I'd be gross looking and loose skin. There's no point in anything. No, I think I should just end it all. And then I was like, whoa, wait, they warned me about this. When the first one I was depressed and took thoughts of suicide, be careful, talk to people about it. And, um, and then later I was like, no, no, there are ways to get rid of the loose skin if you lose it more gradually more healthily and if you like to get loose you can wear like a body slimmer or something to help pull the skin back on your tummy or whatever like there are ways to get rid of the loose skin and I have lost uh some of the weight that I had gained and I do not have a ton of loose skin like I was afraid of so I know it's talking blah 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 anecdote 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 but the thing is, is whoops <laughs> that people don't realize they think they want to bl blame the medication instead of realizing that they should have been monitoring their child if you have a mental illness, you should not be left alone for long periods of time. Because that's when you're prone to do stuff to hurt yourself. And this video is almost 20 minutes long, so actually, I'm going to stop recording here and upload it and see what happens. Mm -hmm.